Hello there, Salim Omar here from the Straight Talk Light Small Business Success Podcast. I am super excited. We're going to talk about a topic that's going to put money in your pocket. And I've invited our resident expert, Rodney Dillo, CPA. Rod, welcome. Uh, thank you for having me, Salim. Excited to talk about it. That's awesome. Yeah. So very quickly, uh, Rod is uh, a chief, the chief operating officer at Straight Talk. Uh, he brings a ton of experience, both in the business, in the public sector, working with publicly traded companies, as well as working with small businesses. So he's got a wide range of experience working with small businesses, helping them save money, make uh, in taxes, make their business more profitable, and really help them achieve their dreams. And when it, when it came to this topic about LLCs and how an LLC could be costing uh, you as a business owner money, if, if that's how you're structured, I felt Rod would be the, the best person to really shed some light uh, on, on this topic. So Rod, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm going to just uh, kick it off with with our with my first question i mean you know the the title we're going to call this is your llc costing you money so uh you've got me intrigued i i'm sure you've got the listeners intrigued and they want to tell us more what, what do you mean when you say an llc could be costing you money i it's been i mean a lot of entrepreneurs set up their businesses in llcs that's usually the advice that they receive is to protect their assets the problem is um there's many things uh, an LLC can actually cost you money in the fact that that those things generate, you'll be paying more in taxes, especially what's called self-employment tax than you would be with some other legal and tax structures. Got it. Yeah. So people don't realize when they're, you know, when they're setting up their business or even if they've been in business for a while and they've just been an LLC all along, and that may not be their best uh, legal structure for them from from a tax save, saving standpoint. Is there any other reason uh, why a business owner should really uh, consider an S corp? Uh, I think the, another big one besides taxes is there's many more options on the retirement savings side. If with certain other uh, legal structures that we can put in place, so you're you're both paying too much in taxes and saving too little on your retirement as an, as an entrepreneur and a business owner. Got it. So two big things, tax mm -hmm. savings, retirement savings, why somebody should, should consider if an S corp is better for them than an LLC. Mm -hmm. Now, before we get into the types of situations where an LLC can be costing a business owner more money, give us a kind of a 30,000 foot uh, view of how is an LLC taxed? An LLC is taxed, there's actually what's considered a default for the federal government. If you are only, if there's only one owner in the business and you make no other elections, the government will treat you as what's called a disregarded entity, a Schedule C. And all your profit, your business income will be reported on your personal tax return. If you have more than one owner in the business, the default treatment is a partnership, which will then get Basically, each owner takes their piece based on their ownership percentage of that company's profits and other items and reports them again on their personal tax return. The business in either case does not pay any taxes on its own. Everything flows back to the individual and is treated as self-employment income on their personal return. Okay, got it. Yeah, so an LLC is taxed as a pass-through entity. The LLC itself does not pay the tax the income or loss passes on to them personally, and then they pay the tax there. So then the question I want to ask you is, how could an LLC be costing a business owner money in additional taxes? The big thing, because these are passed through entities and it is deemed self-employment income, the, the owner is paying tax, regular income tax uh, on their thing. Additionally, the IRS will also assess what's called self-employment tax on that profit. That is, uh, for the first 147000 of it, they will tax it at 15.3%, uh, 
in addition to the regular income tax. Once you go past 147, they continue to tax it at 2.9%. These are our contributions for FICA and Medicare that you would normally get on a normal W-2 that you get withheld and the employer pays. Since you're considered self-employed, the IRS takes both sides of the equation from, from the taxpayer. Yeah, this is very good, very clear. Now, where's, so, yeah, so, so got understood there with the LLC, we've got the income tax, we've got the self-employment tax. Now, when that business becomes an S-corp, is there a saving? Is there one of these taxes goes away? That is that's one of the the night that is one of the uniqueness of an S corporation. Net profits from a from an S corporation are not considered self-employment income by the both the IRS and most states. So that money is not that profit is not taxed that 15.3%. So immediately on the conversion you save 15.3% in tax bills on it, uh, on the first almost $150,000 of income every year, and then continue to save almost 3% going forward to infinity. So yeah, it, it's, it's a, a fairly significant savings. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now t- talk to us about reasonable wages. You know, when, when you're an S-Corp, you know, the IRS you know, in the code, there is, you know, you know, there is verbiage along the lines of that the business owner has to take reasonable wages. What is that? That's one thing, because when you form an S corporation, the owner is now deemed an employee of the business and the IRS takes the position that an employee would not work for free. So they expect that owner to draw what they call a reasonable wage. There is no bright line in, in the code about what would be considered, a, people have done many rules of thumb. We tend to go, uh, my advice is normally, do a quick survey get on and find out what a person doing your job in a regular business would get paid. And you can use that as at least an initial baseline for what the IRS would deem as reasonable wages. Um, you can go to the bottom of that range, it's fine as long as you can point to it. Other, uh, that's my normal recommendation because you want to cover yourself, but you want to leave as much opportunity for non-taxable, non, non-self-employment non profit in the business as you can. Yeah, yeah, really, uh, really, really beneficial what, you, what you're sharing. Can you kind of, you know, round this off perhaps with, with an example of, you know, how the, how the numbers work out uh, for an LLC to be an S-Corp? Kind of give us a, a scenario or something. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll keep the numbers simple. Um, a business owner has a business owner who is not an S corp, just a regular LLC single member, earns a hundred thousand dollars after you know after all his expenses, he has a hundred thousand dollars profit. Mm-hmm. Normally, what he would he would report would be he'd pay about twenty percent um, on regular income tax on that. He would then also pay another fifteen point three percent income tax. In that case, roughly he would pay almost $35,000, over $35,000 of income tax on that $100,000 profit. This is just federal tax. I'm not adding anything in for state or otherwise. Right. That's, so you've got federal income tax and you've got self uh, self you've got self-employment tax in there, right? Without yes. state any state income tax. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a pretty big chunk there. It's a very high. You're you're now. I mean, you're in the thirty-five overall. You're at thirty over thirty-five percent taxation rate just for federal. If you were a S corp, the same scenario. Assuming we uh, we pay ourselves fifty thousand dollars. I'm going to keep the math. I'm going to cheat and keep the math easy. Um, yeah. You would uh, you would pay yourself a fifty thousand dollar wage, that leaves fifty thousand dollars in net profit because your wages are a business expense. Uh, mm. So you would still pay roughly the hundred. You you would pay regular income tax on a hundred thousand dollars, your fifty thousand dollar W two that's on your return, and then the fifty thousand dollar net that you paid, that's left from your business. The upside being now. That fifty, that fifty thousand that's still left is not subject to self-employment tax. So your mm. entire amount 
of your tax is going to be roughly $20,000 on that $100,000 income, saving yourself almost $15,000 because you've avoided all that self-employment tax. Wow. Yeah, that's a pretty massive saving there. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it adds is, up quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really good stuff. Now, what's, you know, earlier on, you said there are two reasons why uh, a business owner that's uh, that's structured as an LLC should strongly consider an S-Corp. You've given us one very strong reason, mm -hmm. uh, massive tax savings. What's the second reason, if you can kind of give us a little bit, shed some light on, on that. You talked about some reti retirement savings. What, what, is, what does that mean? And how is that a... A benefit to the business owner. There's many uh, a number of a number of retirement vehicles that are allowed for a corporation that aren't available to a self-employed individual that's only a Schedule C or a partnership. A big one being in this case, I'm going to pick a single owner. He's the only employee. If he forms an S corporation, he can actually create what's called a solo 401k, which allows you to defer money both contribute as an employee, since he is an employee, he can defer from his paycheck up to $19,000. And then the business can then actually match up to $38,500. So that that's not include, if that's not counting any catch up provisions, I'm just keeping it at the base. The fun, the, the interesting part is the 38.5 business contribution is considered a business expense that actually reduces their taxable income for the year. So you get to actually save money as an owner, get right, reduce your income for tax purposes, and build wealth at the same time. So it's mm. it's a rare moment where effectively you get to get a deduction and keep the money, albeit it's going to be out into the future, but you actually can get something and still not have to give up, but you give up access to the funds in the short term, but they're still yours. So it, it's something that it's a, a, it's a large value proposition for owners and allows them to pretty well basically max out their available retirement deferrals for the year, depending on how much income they have. So it, it's, it's a, it's a plus across the board. Yeah. So the person who's listening to this is an LLC is like, man, I really need to, like based on what you've shared here, I really need to consider forming an LLC uh, and an S Corp. Do they need, so if somebody's an LLC, do they need to form an S Corp or can they convert their existing LLC into an S Corp? And that's a very good question. And actually you do not have to form a separate company. You can convert your LLC. It is a fairly straightforward process. Uh, you, you would need to elect, there's two forms that have to be submitted to the IRS. One is an, a form 8832, which you tell the IRS, I'm electing now to take my LLC and I want it to be treated as a corporation. That's, that's first step one. And then you file another form called 20, uh, form 2553, which is an election by a small business corporation to be treated as an escort. Those two forms are all you need to do from a federal level. There'll be some state forms that need filed as well, but those are the only two. And if you, you can pick the time, uh, as long as you can go back, as long as you're within two months and 15 days of the time you, you can effectively by March 15th of that year, you could pick and cover the entire year you're in. So, but it's very straightforward and it's uh it's something, but I would recommend people talking to their tax professional help them file that because once they once it's in, if you make mistakes, it gets kind of clunky to fix. So I would recommend yeah, working it's, with uh, tax professional. In my experience, it's uh, it's uh, it's one of the forms where I see people make lots of mistakes. Mm -hmm. So while it seems simplistic, the form and answering the questions, there's some questions that are quite tricky actually. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, when you first started business and, and so forth. So there's some nuances in, in filling out the, the form. When uh, I say straightforward, it's thing... straightforward to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, we've had to clean so many messes up, Rod, with when a business mm -hmm. owner 
thought they were an escort. You know, we this is like a weekly thing where we're trying to clean up some um, mm -hmm. somebody who made, who made a mess or they're an accountant that didn't do it right or in time and so forth. So the business owner thought they were an escort. Uh, but the IRS does not think that they're an S corp, no. and so the the business owner is filing tax S corp tax returns mm -hmm. and sending it over. The you know, and because the the IRS is so back backed up, uh, they're just accepting those returns. And then after five years, the IRS wakes up and says, "All right, all these years you filed business S corp tax returns and your personal tax returns, we are not going to accept them, and you have to refile." Uh, and pay penalties and interest. So it's a By the way, you're late mega. filing everything and it's here's, right. your, yeah. here's your penalties and interest. Yes. Uh, so I always recommend that you work with a professional to uh, go through it, but it is something that a business owner should really consider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, so the, you've really given us a strong case here why an LLC should consider. It's not in all cases that you know they need to be in it. They, they're going to you know benefit from an escrow. We got to kind of you know see the the situation. Mm -hmm. But you made a strong case why they should consider. And if they became an escrow, is there any way uh, going back to being an LLC in the future? That's a, another good question. It is. It's actually the the revocation process requires basically writing a letter to the IRS requesting a revocation of their escort collection. And then you would have to revoke it. And then you would have to then file an 8832 again to change yourself back from a corporation to either disregarded. Because if you just revoke the S election, now you're just a regular C corporation, which is the one thing I don't, most small businesses don't want to be. Um, so then you you would then have to revoke your revoke change your s your uh, business election as well. I really recommend people think hard about it before they do that to make sure they understand because once you revoke your s election, you cannot reapply for five years. So there's a mm -hmm. large window. So once you you it's easy to take it back. It's, but then you have to, then there's a significant cooling off period before you could apply again, at least for that business. Mm, got it. Yeah. This is very good, Rod. I mean, I really appreciate you sharing, you know, your, your wisdom here with us. And I can see the experience that you bring to the table with your knowledge of all the, the intricacies of mm -hmm. uh, everything we, we talked about. Uh, if a listener wants to reach out to you, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, they can reach out to me uh, via email. Uh, my email is rod at straighttalkcpas.com. It's uh, I'll be uh, happy to schedule a session to go over their go over what they're looking for and uh, give them some advice and and help them form one if it seems appropriate. Awesome, that's great. Thank you very much. Thanks to the listeners for uh, tuning in, viewing in. I uh, appreciate you and uh, see you next time. Take care. Thanks, Lynn.